Hey, how's it going? Today I'm going to be talking about how to make your own sampler instruments from what you have at home. Today I'm going to be working with a Yamaha PSS-170 and going through my workflow. So this type of sampling technique works if you do not have any MIDI capabilities from your synthesizers or instruments. And it does take some time to set up. If you're going to be sampling every single preset from these older machines, it's going to be taking hours, but in the end, I would argue it's worth it because you can get some really amazing results from it. So step number one, you're going to want to plug in your keyboard to your interface so that you can get audio out. Sometimes you'll see keyboards like the PSS-170 having just a headphone jack. You may be thinking, oh, I'll just convert that to quarter inch and plug it into an input. Well, sometimes, like in this case, you may want to get a output that has a stereo out because to my surprise, the PSS-170 does support stereo output. So after you plug in your cables to your interface, do some test notes for your volumes. You wanna test one note at your highest and your loudest on your uh, keyboard span and see how loud it is. Personally, I like to shoot for around one to five decibels of headroom. That way it's not clipping, it's not distorting, but you're getting a lot more sound per the noise floor. At the same time, you wanna make sure to turn up the volume on the keyboard to the highest setting to also mitigate that noise uh, reduction. On top of that, make sure to take care as to what your cables run along because with these older systems, Interference is very, very easy to come across. You can get buzzing and humming and additional white noise if your cables are crossed with either your headphone cables or anything else that's not shielded. So with that out of the way, let's get things started. What I first did was I hit record with my uh, keyboard plugged in to my interface, and then I played one note after the other successively, leaving about like a fraction of a second or a quarter of a second, half a second, whatever, of space for uh, silence in between each note. Sometimes there are little artifacts, for example, there are with this one that has a little bit of like buzzing, hissing noise at the tail end, because this is an FM synthesizer, technically, um, that I wanted to capture the characteristic of. So you want to record from the lowest all the way to the highest, just like this. After doing so, you want to make sure to mark what your lowest note is and what your highest note is in corresponding to like C5, D minus 1, F minus 6, G7, whatever that range is. You can take your lowest note and your highest note. Just jot that down because if you're going to be doing this a lot, you want to make sure that whenever you're exporting presets or creating presets, that you have some consistency between the uh, key ranges. So next, you want to double click on your audio file or hit E, and it'll bring up this menu. By default, it'll be on track, but instead, I'm going to click on file. So this is the audio file has all of the uh, notes separated. And to get started, you want to do a couple of things before it'll even allow you to export into a sampler instrument. I've already tried the classic method of dragging here to create an instrument, but it seemed to bug out because this is almost a three minute recording and those times will vary depending on whatever you have. So hit E, go to file, click audio file, and then click detect transients. This is very important because this next step won't work if you don't do this. After doing so, it'll load for uh, a few moments and then analyze the transients. And then it will allow you to do the very next step. So let's go ahead and right click and hit convert to sampler track or control E. What this will do is it'll take each note corresponding to the different sections of the track and create an instrument for you. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, this is where it's very important. You want to create the name of your instrument and set your range. So for my example, 
this keyboard has a range of F1 to C5. And I'm going to name this based on the corresponding preset, which should be 00, zero piano one, because this is the first preset that I sampled. Now, another important thing is to select what type of sampling that you're going to be doing. I'm going to be using the multi-sampler instrument, so I'm going to select sampler. And because I created transient marks, I'm going to use the transient markers to create the zones for my instrument. So let's go ahead and hit create. Now, as you can see, I have created a MIDI instrument with the sampler. And if we open it up and check out the settings, you'll see it is marked from F1 to C5 with all of our notes. So let's go ahead and test it out. Let's go ahead and find that lowest note and that highest note. Perfect. So that was pretty easy. Now, it may you may think that you're done here, but there's one final step to ensure that it saves. You're going to want to hit uh, save as and you want to, I mean, I have mine set up like in a folder, so uh, from some of the different instruments that I've sampled. Uh, you can also create a new folder because this will get pretty messy pretty quick. And then save your uh, patch accordingly. I already have mine, so I don't have to hit save, but that's just a quick way to make a sampler instrument from anything that does not have MIDI support. Hope this helps. You'll have a good one.